Okay, so it's been a week now since Free Jam announced that they would be working on Robocraft 2. This is significant, as Robocraft is the game that Free Jam is best known for, having been an innovative game at its inception all the way back in 2013. Of course, since then, a fair number of games have come out with varying degrees of um, similarity and success, and Free Gem themselves have experimented also with titles like Robocraft Royale, Gamecraft, and Tech Blocks. So, almost 10 years later, Free Jam have come out with this announcement, and have since also posted an About page with a list of planned features for Robocraft 2. I will be linking that below, and posting a snapshot of it at the end of the video also, so that you may go through the list at your own pace. But I will be focusing on things that caught my attention. Before going through the list, one thing that excites me about this development is that FreeJam have nearly 10 years of experience in the field now. They've had their misses, but Robocraft was a hit, at least relatively speaking, and this is a sequel to that game. First up, we have the Advanced Building System list of expected features. There is a lot to speak about. Some are exciting and some are um, intimidating. It is clear that they will be building the new Robocraft on the foundation of Tech Blocks, the game that they had been working on up until this point, until recently. And this makes a lot of sense as a lot of work already went into it. A few things that I would like Free Jam to keep in mind going forward, however. Firstly, one reason why Robocraft was successful is due to the ability of new players to pick it up and make an interesting creation without needing much understanding or effort. One does not need prefabricated bots with a little bit of common sense, and while there is a learning curve and a depth for more advanced building techniques, they are mostly optional and manageable. The build mode user interface was also relatively intuitive, and this is what got players hooked. I've tried tech blocks out myself, made a few builds over time, only one of which I truly consider um, pretty much finished. Intuitiveness is an area that I feel it definitely needs improvement in. Also, free jam, do not underestimate the value of a mirror mode being an option. It reduces the minimum effort of players to make a build by half, which also means requiring half the investment on the part of players still making up their minds as to whether they like a game or not. It, as a feature, needs to be introduced sooner rather than later, in my opinion. I'd also say similar of the undo function. TechBlox's wiring system will be making a comeback for Robocraft 2. As concerns this, I have this to say. It is a very interesting system, but it needs significant improvements both in terms of intuitiveness as well in terms of organization, as compared to what it was in TechBlox. It is my understanding, however, that this is an area that FreeJam are actively working on, and so, with some optimism, I will wait and see what they come up with. While on the subject of building, it seems that FreeJam will be going for a more granular approach for weapon design, and that weapons will need to be rigged manually. This sounds promising, and it's clear that they are aiming to enable weapons on player-designed turrets, which is a feature that has been requested multiple times in the past. Some would be very happy to hear that. Speaking of setting up weapons manually, I do think that there is a good opportunity here to allow players to come up with variants of existing baseline weapons using a point-by system, or similar. A nature change system not a power gain system, as is the case with the weapon upgrades feature of Robocraft 1, which, um, yeah. A feature that has me a little excited at the possibilities is that FreeJam are planning to allow a bay with more than one playable robot to make it into a match. Now, what gets me excited about this is because with some adjustments, one could potentially unlock a limited form of play in Robocraft 2 as a real-time strategy game. And I'm really liking the idea, the, the, the concept of being able to instruct different parts of one's build to go different places and do things. It seems interesting, 
I'd like to see what happens with that. All it requires is an elevated viewpoint, an ability to program fundamental AI in secondary bots, and a means to dish out orders, all within the same CPU limitations that our bots are constrained to. There is definitely potential there. The intended omission of rectifier systems, um, FLIP, is a little concerning, even if there will allegedly be ways for players to build such in. Again, it's early, and this may evolve over time. Well, that's me on advanced building systems. Let's move on to the section about destruction systems. In Robocraft 2, it will actually be possible to take and cause damage by slamming into objects and opponents. This may be bad news for lighter builds, but we'll see. It certainly sounds exciting. Parts that fall off a bot will remain in the world. It will be interesting to see if these chunks can be interacted with in some shape or form. Another thing that will get some people excited is the notion of environmental destruction. Exactly what they mean by this is unclear, but I'm suspecting they're talking about minor features on the terrain which can be interacted with in fun and different ways. All I can say to this is the more the better. Moving on to physics, FreeJam is aiming for realistic server-side physics. This is going to help enable bots to interact with each other. In fact, this reminds me of one of my earliest builds, which was a large rotor platform. Broad, able to lift stuff, um, or so it was designed to do. Which couldn't lift anything, because, you know, the Robocraft physics wasn't um, something that could cater to that but this apparently is going to be the case. It sounds like something like this will actually be more doable in Robocraft 2, and that would be great. A lot of physics side things are based on tech blocks having been intended to be a racing simulator, but there will be a lot more going on, and I'm excited to see what that turns out to be. Moving on, I am a little disappointed that there are no immediate plans to include pre-made wing parts, but it is early, and it is definitely the case that FreeJam are intending an aerodynamic flight-based system to be possible, where wings are literally created out of blocks, so I'm curious to see what that will mean for winged planes or even rotor bots that presumably would also need to be made of blocks. It's early days. The ability to ram other players, however, will be interesting. I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to that, and... We'll see how it goes, especially if things like wedges and applied force over a small area gets damage bonuses. Leaving physics behind, let's get to gameplay, the meat of the matter. Now, FreeJam doesn't mention a specific mode of play here. They do describe some details, like an ability to get cosmetics for playable player avatars, which is cool. They also mention things like a player character hopping out of a bot to get into, uh, for example, a turret to defend a base or to disable a shield. They also mention how a character can survive the destruction of a bot, which is interesting, or that auto-healing won't be a part of the game, which by the way I feel some concern over, because while there is such a thing as too much auto-heal, I also feel that there's also such a thing as too little auto-heal, but that's just my opinion. They also mentioned the possibility of a player avatar being able to teleport back to base to possibly choose a different bot. What this suggests to me is a mode that might have something in common with Battle Arena, but which will likely also be different. At the same time, FreeJam also mentions that they plan on prioritizing fast and fair matchmaking, and so will focus on a single game mode at the beginning, probably on a limited basis so as to funnel us players into particular time slots to ensure a better play experience. What I have to say about this is that Robocraft 1 already has a game mode that is quite suitable for catering for a limited player base. I am referring to the pit mode. Now, for those of you whom are unfamiliar with the mode, it basically involves a number of players, each solo, pitched into an all-versus-all battle where the aim of the mode is to be the first to achieve a certain number of points based on kills and whom one kills. 
or destroys. So it has sadly been out of circulation for years, but it remains a solid foundation that I think FreeJam should consider for preliminary testing due to its relative simplicity and the benign chaos it causes. Also, while it may not be a popular opinion, until a healthy player base is established, it is my opinion that active game modes should cycle, kind of like as of present, but not randomly, as is currently the case. I would actually like things to reach a point where a player can look at their clock and say, oh, I know what mode is on right now, without needing to log in, without any trouble whatsoever. To put it into perspective of Robocraft 1, for instance, it's like saying, okay, the first 20 minutes of every hour is going to be Battle Arena, followed by 20 minutes of Team Deathmatch, followed by 20 minutes of Elimination, and our restart. So you'll know that the first 20 minutes of every single hour is Battle Arena. Or, if a particular mode is less popular than the others, one could say, okay, 30 minutes of Battle Arena, 20 minutes of Team Deathmatch, and 10 minutes of Elimination. And maybe we could even get Pit back, hopefully. Although I don't think that's actually a possibility at this point, which is sad. Oh well. There's always Robocraft 2, right? So, anyway. This would give FreeJam valuable information about which modes are more or less popular based on, you know, simply being predictable. It seems that FreeJam is going to be creating a downloadable launcher for Robocraft 2 in the future, in true Robocraft fashion, and there will be several login options, which will be covered in the link. There is of course a lot more that could be said, but I think I'll pass the mic over to the viewers now. So what are your thoughts on this? Were you expecting to see Robocraft make a comeback almost 10 years after its inception? Is there anything you hope will be passed over from Robocraft? Is there something you hope does not? Let us know down in the comments below and I'll see you there. And of course, thank you for watching.